ideal for football. No complaints in terms of the weather, and certainly the crowd here of 25,000 people. Rank outsiders Antrim will be hoping to up uh, their performance against Down, but it has already been a great season for Antrim. To deputise with the injured and indeed suspended Owen McCluskey. His defence is solid and strong, with Gary Coleman, Henry Downey and Paul McFlynn forming an exceptional half-back line. Anthony Toll and Dermot Heaney provide a great midfield partnership, while the attack is illuminated by the presence of the youthful Paddy Bradley and Enda Muldoon in the full forward line. The last time these two counties met uh, in the championship uh, was in the ultimate in any way. Thus, manager Brian White has these 15 players to start. Hero against down, goalkeeper Sean McGreevy is protected by a full back line that contains the Antrim captain Anto Finnegan in the corner. Garoth Adams and John Kelly flank Aidan Morris in a half back line of huge potential. Joe Quinn and Sheenie McQuillan man the crucial centre field area while the attack is built around two key central players, Con Coleman and Ronan Hamill, at centre and full forward, respectively. Michael's band from Enniskillen in County Fermanagh provided the uh, music here at Caseman Park and did it uh, with style. Tension uh, quite evident, particularly in the Antrim dressing room. They arrived rather late here, uh, just arriving about uh, 25 minutes ago. Tony Davis, uh, former Cork football star, joins me just before the game starts. Tony, your thoughts? I think that uh, for the start of the game, Antrim will open uh, in a world and really go at it hammer and tongs. And if Antrim are to sway the balance there in midfield. Well, match referee John Bannon from Longford uh, in uh, Carrick Boy. I mean, for a little bit of criticism before the uh, championship game uh, started from Eamon Coleman, the Derry manager, over previous games, which was rather unusual. But that uh, won't affect John Bannon, he told me, be, uh, about an hour or so ago. First free is to Derrick. Quickly taken by Anthony Toho. And towards uh, Paddy Bradley. Another oh, poor pass, but it still works out. A chance here for Aidan Morris. Former Tyrone footballer. Martin Mulholland. Derry trying to uh, put the home side under pressure right from the beginning. Gary Coleman. And the captain, Anthony Toll. Good ball in towards Johnny McBride. And that is very much to the left and wide. Chance here by McBride. Had the confidence to have a goal, but uh, sent it uh, well to the right. Underneath it, Henry Downing is back there, pushing the number six. So it's going to be a free for Derry. And Anthony Tohill uh, wanted it to be taken rather quickly. There's the push. Bradley leaves a run on, but fails to collect. Well, 
We're still talking here in Belfast uh, about Sean McGreevy's performance. St. Paul's clubman from the Shaw's Road. Had a marvellous game against Down. And Derry will be well aware of that. Peter McCann. Crowd respond to the first real attack from Antrim. The road Adams setting that ball deep. And here, Kevin, Kieran McKeever escorting it over the line. Turn around for this young goalkeeper. Substitute uh, during the league campaign to Owen McCluskey and now finds himself in the league final and the Ulster Championship. With Owen McCluskey being injured. Peter McCann from the All Saints Club in Ballymena. Well blocked down. And Anton will try once more. Niall McCusker. And that's going to be a silent ball. One of the great skills of Gaelic football, the block down. Sheenie McQuillan. His role is vital, scored seven points uh, against Down. And that groin strain is a uh, source of great worry to Antrim if he will survive 70 minutes. Meanwhile, the centre half forward, Con Coleman, comes back towards Joe Quinn. And that is also an effort. Second wide of the game for Antrim. But certainly, the home side have settled and uh, beginning to uh, play with a little bit more confidence. Just one point, Marty. Joe Quinn is marking Anthony Toll and Shane McQuillan is marking Dermot Heaney. And Ronan Hamill, the full forward, is moving out the field to get, trying to win the breaks out both of them at the midfield area. And added to that, uh, Tony, uh, Derry are playing just a two-man full forward line. But the ball is not going down to them as uh, Garold Adams goes into the attack. Needs the support outside of Ronan Hamill. Back to Adams. pitch in absolutely magnificent condition here in case went down. Another free to Derek. Quickly taken. Anthony Tohal had uh, crept away from his marker. Sending it over towards Paddy Bradley but just sliced off his boots. Sideline ball to Antrim. just the victory over down that's important from an Antrim perspective they've had a good league campaign won the All-Ireland B last December beat for Manor in the final and of course uh, their opponents that day are in the other Ulster semi-final sideline ball Derry Paddy Bradley last year's uh, minor football captain in Derry now graduating onto the senior side. Hits it well. And accurately. It took over six minutes, but uh, Derry have their names on the scoreboard. An interesting tussle, to say the least. But certainly, this point showed tremendous flair and confidence. A young man just out of the minor ranks. Sheeny McQuillan is holding on to Dermot Heaney. Sheeny is protesting that it was the other way around, but it is a free to Derry. Anthony Tohal. 
sending it on towards Paddy Bradley. Beating Ender McLernan. Playing very deep is John McManus. Anto Finnegan, the captain of Antrim. And this is the corner forward deep inside his own half of the field. As Derry keep the pressure on, and Antrim finding it difficult to find a route out of their own half. They win a free. John McManus gets a touch. Sideline ball, Derry. Dermot Heaney. Using Niall McOsker. And that uh, a little bit wayward. And no threat to Sean McGreevy. No real pattern as of yet, Tony Davis. No pattern yet. It's been a nervous start, actually, by both sides. Uh, uh, initially, Derry were getting on top, but it, sometimes they're kicking the ball away like that. It's a waste of play, especially when they have two very good inside forwards within the Muldoon showing for everything in there. Picked off the ground. Decides it is a Derry free. We didn't quite actually see the pickup there, but uh, I think it was blatantly picked off the ground just before that. Here's a man who scored four points against Cavan. Slack marking by Antrim. Derrick Heaney sends it wide. Fourth wide of the game for Derry. And the start that they wanted isn't quite there yet for Derry. Just one point on the scoreboard. his captain once more. The preview is coming off his line. It's loose. Available. And taking the chance is Don Matuga. Certain nervousness uh, when this ball dropped in. And it could have been a lot more dangerous. It resulted, however, in Derry's second point of the match. Good ball in towards the corner. Well gathered by Kieran McKeever ahead of Kevin Doyle. Sean Marty Lockhart. Dermot Dugan playing deep. Ender Muldoon battling with Martin Mulholland and uh, Muldoon getting the better of the tussle. He needs the centre half forward from Newbridge, Dermot Dugan. Paddy Bradley sweeping from one corner to the other and there's big problems here for Antrim. Bradley he uses Johnny uh, McBride, and that is gone to the left and wide again. Derry now have five wides. This is the sort of uh, football that we were expecting from Derry. Maybe not quite the result, but certainly uh, the quick ball into their full forward line. This is what the lads were talking about before the game. When Derry up the tempo of the game, move the ball fast and let it in, then um, Derry will be a bit better than Antrim. Oh, 
And at the moment, Terry are enjoying dominance at midfield. Two Derry players get there ahead of any entrant defender, Paddy Bradley. A chance here of a point, which is well taken. And certainly it looks very simple when it's played well, this game of football. And Dermot Dugan registers his second point of the match. Nice combination football. Always a player available and a well-taken score at the end of it. Center half back Aiden Marks. Back to Sheenie McQuilla. Kevin Doyle had to work very hard. The road Adams now adds a new dimension to the attack by going forward. But nobody again readily available and into the space where there's only the goalkeeper from Derry. Hit by a real wallop of a shoulder. And Kevin Doyle going to be spoken to, I'm sure, by the uh, referee and Michael Conlon still suffering this is the challenge again and that was a bookable offence On the evidence of the game so far, Anthony Toll is head and shoulders above everybody else that's on the field. Just when the ball was hit in there, he was the one guy going back to take the simple pass off the goalkeeper to, to give him a, an option out. And when the ball is around midfield, he's the one that's winning the breaks and winning it in the air. He's a handful for anyone to mark in the form he's in at the moment. This is Brian White, the uh, Antrim manager. He's Chief Jam. Quite remarkably, in his season so far, his very first season as manager. Great running by Toho down the middle. Gary Coleman spots his captain. This is a great one by the midfielder, bursting his way forwards. And that is deflected for a 45. But Anthony Toho was dramatically running through the heart of the Antrim defence. Great vision by Coleman. You can see the call was from his captain, and it took all of Antrim to stop Toho finding the net. What a wonderful run, though, by the big midfielder. And just as Tony Davis said a moment ago, he really is head and shoulders above uh, everything else that's on view here today. There seems to be a mouth problem, possibly uh, for the uh, Antrim defender. He's receiving uh, some attention there. And, uh, some of the backroom team here in Antrim. Let's just look at this again. As Anto Finnegan came in very late, and uh, the Antrim captain is able to resume. Here's Anthony Toho. And with ease, finds the target. Terry lead by four points. And on the action so far, well worth every one of those scores. of the match for Antrim, still unable to register a score. But overall, that's only about their second chance that they've had 
in uh, 17 minutes of action. Brian White uh, with the Bonish Store jersey on there from the uh, Falls Road, member of the O'Donovan Rossi Club. Ronan Hammer. Poor pass for Gerald Adams, easily cut out by Paul McFlynn. Here on McKeever. Up towards Paddy Bradley. Good covering, however, by John Kelly. Left half back to star for Antwerp plays hurling as well for his county Sheeny McQuillan Sean Monty Blocker brother David O'Neill was falling so that's going to be a free and very quickly taken by Kevin Doyle chance for Ronan Hamill or Antrim about to open their account in Casement Park the answer is a very definite yes Ronan Hamill gets Antrim's First point in this Ulster semi-final. Quick thinking by left half forward Kevin Doyle found Hamill in a little bit of space, and despite some tight marking when taking the kick, he sent it over the bar. I think that's the secret for Antrim. They will have to move the ball faster and find Ronan Hamill earlier instead of holding the ball up outside. Ronan Hamill at, at times is the only man within the 50-yard line, so it's very hard to find him. And that point will surely give uh, the Antrim lads a little bit of confidence. Here's a better ball now, down towards Kevin Brady. Needs the help of uh, Con Coleman. Derry defending in large numbers, and that's going to be a sideline ball for Antrim. Now, cameraman there uh, showing some nice football skills as well. In this lovely summer's day here in Belfast. Good defend by Carrie Coleman. Anthony Toho. What a great long kick that is down towards Paddy Bradley. Dermot Dugan available in the middle. And Bradley just sends it to the right and wide. Six wides for Derry. This was uh, all created by a magnificent long kick by Anthony Toho. <laughs> Bursting through the middle, Anthony Toho just dispossessed. Anto Finnegan. Down towards Kevin Doyle. A large home support get behind their team when they do surge forward. Kevin Brady. He's fouled by David O'Neill. So it's a free for Antrim in front of the post. There's a buzz of excitement when Kevin Brady gathers the ball. A player of uh, tremendous potential. Sheeny McQuillan from the uh, Aaron Zone Club in Cargan going to take this. club that uh, won the senior football championship here in Antrim last year. Scorer of seven points against Down. First opportunity for him. And he sends it over. So despite being dominated by the uh, opposition for the best part of that 17-18 minutes, Antrim find themselves adrift by just uh, two points. Four points to two now, thanks to this uh, free from Sheeny McCullough. <laughs> Member of the uh, Derry management team, Damian Cassidy, a great player in his own uh, playing career. Maybe just a little bit concerned that Derry do have a slight wind advantage, but uh, on the scoreboard, only leading by two points. Poor ball inside. Easily picked up by John McManus. Sheeny McQuillan. And McQuillan again. Antrim gaining no ground, however. It's quite a good ball over towards Ronan Hamill. Kevin Doyle is running inside. Nobody in the middle. Nobody in the space in front of goal. 
So Antrim have to hold possession at the far side. Con Coleman. Back towards Kevin Brady. Has the skill. To take on the Derry defence and uh, pose them problems. Brought down here by Anthony Toho. So another free for Sheeny McQuillan. So maybe this mightn't be as easy as what Derry thought. Yes, they were lucky enough to get a free there, I thought, Marty. But when they were coming up with the ball, there was no one whatsoever inside the 40-yard line. Not one Antrim player. So they had to play the ball across and hold on to it. And in fact, in the end of the day, I'd say he played for a fall because he had no other option. So this is Sheeny McQuillan again. Hits it well, but uh, very much to the left. And it can't uh, be maintained in the uh, playing area by Kevin Doyle. So it's a kick out for Michael Conlon. Never seemed comfortable when taking this free. And judged it uh, too much to the left. getting a touch to it Johnny McBride now operating as a third midfielder as well good covering by Enda McLernan we front up this was the incident again as uh, Ed Morris was being held Paul McFlynn brought down in a challenge that was undoubtedly illegal. Free to Derry. And to Finnegan, a little bit fortunate indeed that they didn't uh, see a yellow card. Henry! Certainly Brian White said uh, just a moment ago the Antrim manager feels surprisingly very confident that his side can actually bring down the league champions Anthony Toll hits it well that's a great kick you won't get better in the country at the moment reproducing the form of the early 90s some would credit that to his manager Eamon Coleman but whoever deserves uh, the credit at the moment Anthony Toll is playing brilliant football for his county much to the pleasure of this man. Gary Coleman. Did well to keep it in. Needs to use Niall McCusker. Dermot Dugan giving it long. The road Adams getting a boot to it, but the ball was there. It's a little bit harsh. You'd have to see that again. The ball was there. Some would uh, give it a, would allow it. Others wouldn't. I don't think it's a free if the ball is there. Is there to be played? And fair enough. A little bit harsh on Antrim, but uh, Paddy Bradley will take the free. And from that particular angle, he would fancy his chances. And surprisingly, he sent it wide. Easy opportunity for the corner forward, and he knows it. Great catch by Joe Quinn. Shows you why he won a Sigerson Cup with uh, Queen's University here in Belfast this season. Good covering by Dermot Heaney. On towards Anthony Tohal. Anto Finnegan unable to prevent him uh, laying it off to Johnny McBride. Anto Finnegan wins possession back. Pushing by Antrim, and it's going to be a free for Derry. 
ninth free of the match for the National Football League champions. It's a poor ball for Ronan Rocks. Hasn't really been able to get on the ball so far in this opening half. And it's the first real poor ball from Anthony Toho. Nobody available. And Antrim will have to do a lot more running off the ball and from a strategic point of view decide on a plan where the ball goes into the uh, Derry Goldmouth area. And at the moment, those two factors are uh, militating against an Antrim victory. Running off the ball and a strategy up front. Tohal again. Enda Muldoon, who's had a quite opening half, fouling Aidan Morris. Man who transferred to uh, St. John's Club here in Belfast uh, at the start of the season. more. Johnny McBride, Martin Mulholland, tussling with Ender Muldoon. Muldoon gets the vital touch and lays it off. John Kelly is over this side, so too is right half forward Niall McCosker, but the ball is signal wide. Well, despite the fact, Tony, that Antrim are to a very large extent being outplayed, they're still very much in this game. And they're still hanging in there. Derry are playing with a very strong wind. They have most of the possession, but they're just not putting it away. They're just not getting their scores. They're dominating midfield. They're playing the best football around, the, around that area, but they're just not finishing it. And with five minutes to go to halftime and three points up with that strong wind, Antrim going in at halftime should be quite happy at that level. Well, indeed, apart from that uh, brilliant run by Anthony Tohal, the Antrim defence has looked uh, quite strong and uh, solid. Yes, Martin Mulholland in particular is handling in the Muldoon very well. If he doesn't win it, in the, in the Muldoon isn't winning it. He's getting a hand or a leg in and breaking it out, and they're picking up the breaks in there. Brian Lynch is warming up along the uh, sideline, as you can see here. And uh, John Bannon has all to play as Damien Cassidy and Eamon Coleman have a quick word with Ryan Lynch. <laughs> and it looks like David O'Neill is the uh, player that's uh, making room for Ryan Lynch. So number four, David O'Neill, is being taken off. Once again, that uh, centre field area seems to belong to Derry. Anto Finnegan trying to get a boot to it. It comes loose and uh, Martin Mulholland is back there. lost and Johnny McManus fouled by McOscar and it's going to be a free for Derry another entrant player down injured at the moment and uh, it certainly looks like Enda McLernan the right corner back seems to have a problem Brian White uh, has already won the All-Ireland B Championship, took over in October just for a period of a couple of weeks, and over the last number of years has been involved with Antrim Miners 
that lost the 1907 and 98 Ulster finals to Tyrone. And uh, McLernan from the Craggan Club in uh, Kickhams in southwest Antrim is back in the action. Just a few metres inside the Antrim half, Anthony Toll feeding Paddy Bradley. Good effort, but just over the bar, just by centimetres. His second point of the match. And Derry stretch their lead uh, with that wind to their backs. It's only just four points, though. You'd expect a lot more from Derry. But they'll be pleased with this uh, latest effort from Paddy Bradley. So four points between the teams. Derry six, and from two. Descent from the Antrim players gives an extra few metres for that uh, foul on Johnny McBride. McBride from the Loop Club has uh, certainly made the number 15 his own this season in a full forward line that looks intimidating, to say the least, on paper. Of Paddy Bradley, Enda Muldoon and Johnny McBride himself. Certainly it was a free, and the worst form of offence after that is descent, because what this has done now, it's brought into Anthony Toll's range, right on the 45-metre line, and from the last one he kicked was 65 metres, so the chances are that he should get this over as well. Well, it is a quite a, a strong breeze that's uh, blowing in Derry's favour, and they need every point as the half-time approaches. Toll's <laughs> kick is accurate. And he gets his third point of the match. Five points between the teams now, thanks to this uh, latest kick from the Derry captain. But overall, Tony, would you think that Eamon Coburn will be happy at halftime, five points, if it stays like this? Certainly going in at halftime, he'd be very happy being up five points, but really they should even be up more with the, with the amount of position they have. Here's perhaps the latest chance for Derry. And obviously the motto is very simple, take every point opportunity that comes your way. It's Ronan Rock's first point of the Ulster semi-final. The warning aspect from an Antrim point of view is it looks like that they have no fulcrum in their attack. They're good up to the 40-yard line, but after that they have nobody inside to pass the ball to. Maybe the wind would help them in the second half. They need it now. Derry certainly have a grip now on this match. It seemed to uh, get tighter as the game progressed. What a wonderful catch by Anthony Toll. Feeds the ball quickly up towards Enda Muldoon. Some fine skills of Gaelic football. Two great catches and a block down all in one sequence. Well, Holland did very well here, the fullback from Antrim. Six points between the teams. And a chance to increase that to seven. Not quite with this kick, but it's still problems for Antrim. Enda Muldoon cut the ball brilliantly, but uh, in his attempts to get it far as Dermot Dugan quickly actually threw the ball. So it's going to be a free for Antrim, just outside their own 20-meter line. As we are now in injury time here in Belfast. But remember, Antrim will have quite a strong breeze in the second half. But tactically, I think they need to think it out again. As Derry surge forward again, this time with Dermot Dugan orchestrating things from the 40-meter line. McFlynn. Oh, well done, Paddy Bradley. Decides to use Gary Coleman. It's a great turn. Great kick. 
The manager's son is playing well at right half back. And Derry come with a late surge. And on the scoreboard, it looks even better from their perspective. Nine points now, Derry. Two points for Antrim. And referee John Bannon, after uh, 37 and a half minutes of action in this first half, has called a halt. A game dominated by Derry and certainly some wonderful skills with three points from Anthony Tohol, the captain, and a great goal-scoring opportunity. Antrim, however, will have plenty of time to think and plenty of action as they have the wind in the sun at... Uh, at the left corner back, a rather right corner back, I think it is, instead of Ender McLernan. So just one change on the Antrim side. John Bannon about to uh, start the second half. And Antrim will have to really step up a major gear to try and stop Derry's path to the Ulster final. Centre half forward, Gemma Dugan. McOscar needs the help of Ender Muldoon. Paddy Bradley is there, and that is very much wide. Ninth wide of the game for Derrick. I think pride is a word that would have been used in the, the Antrim dressing room during halftime, Marty. It's something that they'll have to play for now, and they'll have to play a lot more direct into their full forward line. And as well as that, they'll have to try and curb Anthony Toll at midfield. And you can see the substitute there, Kieran Killale, is on to uh, mark Paddy Bradley in this second half. Even with uh, wind assistance, Derry seemed to have uh, started this second period with greater confidence. Paul McFlynn, about to be challenged by Con Coleman. Ender Muldoon. And Derry are well on their way. It's Muldoon's first point of the Ulster semi-final. But he has been very much involved in the first half, creating chances for others. And the first real opportunity for Derry in this second half as capitalized fully by the Derry players. Score of a goal and three points against Cavan. Muldoon is a player of tremendous potential. Nice skill by Peter McCann. Aidan Morris. Gerald Adams. But Dermot Dugan has uh, challenged Aidan Morris after the ball was cleared. So the referee is, in fact, going to have a word with both players. Just confirmation of the uh, substitution there. Ender McLernan is the player that's gone off with uh, a, a shoulder injury as Dermot Dugan here and Aidan Morris both receive the first yellow cards of the game. Dermot Dugan, Paul McFlynn and Dermot Heaney, all available. Ender Baldo, brilliant catch. And a wonderful interception to match it by Martin Mulholland. a good ball as Antrim tried to register their third point of the game and it's on its way Ronan Hamill getting his second point of the match that uh, long ball strategy that we were talking about in the first half may well pay dividends for Antrim in the second half particularly when they're assisted by that uh, strong breeze good score Rocks, the target of Michael Conlon's kick out. Mulholland. Breaking ball favours Niall McOscar. Paul McFlynn. 
on the overlap from the left half-back position. Stopped in his tracks illegally, free to Derry. Con Coleman's name being taken, but, uh, no yellow card being shown. But a free for Anthony Toll, well within his range. Gives you a good idea of uh, Anthony Tohill's perspective on this free. Going for a second point from a place ball. And in total, Anthony Tohill has four points. As Jerry sneak away from their opponents in this semi final. Well struck free. Gerald Adams. Called by Henry Downey. Nobody running out towards the right half back. So Sheeny McQuillan is going to take the free. As Gerald Adams is free as shown once again. Sheeny McQuillan hits it well and just to the left and wide. Sheeny McQuillan hit it well and a little bit unfortunate that it just tailed at the last moment. This is Kevin Madden who is uh, warming up along the sideline. This is a player that is just uh, scintillating when he gets going and easily one of Antrim's best footballers in the last decade or so. Henry Downey is fouled. Flynn acknowledges that he mishit it completely. And that's uh, deep into the stand of the far side, as that uh, introduction of Kevin Madden is now possible. One of the highest uh, scorers in the National Football League last year. The man who uh, is recovering from injury had his jaw broken in two places against Westmead in the uh, National League as John McManus makes way for Kevin Madden. initiatives and creativity to an Antrim attack that is uh, devoid of that at the moment. A chance by Aidan Morris. Centre half back is sent over the ball. In many ways it's a reflection of Antrim's performance from uh, an attacking perspective because it means that their midfielder and their centre half back are doing a lot of the scoring, apart from Ronan Hamill. <laughs> Joe Quinn gets a touch. Ronan Hamill again. Back to Quinn. It's a ball that's way off target. And possession given away. Sixth wide of the match for Antrim. And really, they would want to be doing a lot better with uh, this sort of possession. Some of the foot passing today on both sides has been very poor. As we saw a while ago, another kick over the sideline and then a wasteful ball wide. All those balls should be worked in around the goal. Great catch by Con Coleman. Good defending, however. As Derry surge forward once more. Brian McCosker. Dermot Dugan. Cutting through the Antrim defensive cover. Ender Muldoon. With his second point of the second half.
Derry look more confident as the game progresses. That was very poor marking by Martin Mulholland. He should have been right up next to him and at least put him under pressure when he's taking a shot. Con Coleman gets a touch. Henry Downey battles well. And Anthony Tohull is available. Providing the overlap is Paul McFlynn. Jersey being pulled and Paddy Bradley didn't stop him. Back outside towards Johnny McBride. Needs Ronan Rocks. Kieran Killele. Seeks and finds Joe Quinn. Good play by Kevin Brady. Kevin Madden, tormentor of so many defences over the last couple of seasons. Difficult angle, almost along the end line. And that's a point by Kevin Madden. One of the uh, prolific scorers here in Antrim and already has made an impact. He's holding that jaw because it's still, I believe, a little bit sore. He really had to battle hard to get by Kieran McKeever. There was a touch there from Anthony Tohill on that uh, broken jaw. But uh, Madden's determination won out. Twelve points to five now. And again they try and find either Brady or Matt. This time it's Kevin Brady. Back towards Peter McCann. And that is very much wide. Former cornerback uh, come wing back, Peter McCann has adopted well to an attacking role. by Ronan Hamill, sending it back towards Kevin Brady. Can he get a touch? He can! And Antrim are back in the Ulster semi-final. Paceman Park comes alive as the saffron and white blows in the summer breeze. Brady had to get a touch, and amazingly, against a very tight, very defensive cover, they managed to get it past Michael Conlon. The arrival of Kevin Madden has certainly brought new confidence to this Antrim side. As Sean Marty Lockhart was caught for that touch by Kevin Brady. So just tell you, Marty, any ball into the square, into the danger area, and you could get scores out of it. Instead of trying to work the ball over and back across the field, it wasn't even a perfect ball that was kicked in. Just landed in the square, got his fish with and a great score. Free to add top. Paceman Park is a box. Creeping inside is Kevin Doyle. And it's a point. What a response. Falls Road and Anderson's Town here in Belfast is a boss, a wash, with chat and colour. Three points between the teams. Brian White's confidence perhaps has been well founded on a spirited team that really doesn't want to hear of defeat. And their fans have responded. And suddenly, the dominance that Derry enjoyed all the way in this game at midfield is beginning to look a little bit more fragile. A chance for Con Coleman. It's tailing, unfortunately, from his perspective. This is a great period of dominance by Antrim. A chance here for Coleman. was just off target. 
Joe Quinn seems to have picked up an injury. Remember, he was carried off against Down last year with an injured knee and recovered remarkably. And if he had to now depart the scene, it would be a devastating blow to the home side. Definitely, because since the start of the second half, Anthony Toler, Dermadini haven't won one ball in the air, or Derry haven't won one breaker on the middle of the field. Whatever was said to them at halftime, they're a lot more aggressive in the middle of the field, and when they get the break, they're letting it off, first time with the wind, and they're causing all sorts of trouble for the Derry defence. That Derry defence, if it has a weakness, it's when you run at them, put them on their back foot and keep them there, and that's the only way you can run them and beat Derry. Well, this change of strategy, Tony, is certainly paying dividends. The long ball, the quick ball into that uh, goal mouth area in front of the Derry uh, post is unquestionably causing problems. The loose ball. Picked up by Cod Coleman. It's free to Antrim. Anthony Tohill was fouling. And indeed, he's going to be spoken to by the referee. Swing around by the Derry captain. And a yellow card is being shown to Anthony Toho. Rightly so, should have got a yellow card for this. And now it puts Shane McQuillan in the same position where Anthony Toll scored from in the first half. So all these things are so important from them from now on. Shane McQuillan with the free. Hits it well. And over the bar. What a transformation. A turnaround that didn't seem possible in any shape or form. Antrim trail by just two points. A game that was drifting away from them in the sunshine of Belfast seems now to have sparked a response deep within the soul of the Antrim footballers. an Ulster Championship match here in Belfast. And the referee again having a word indeed uh, speaking to the uh, Antrim player Kevin Doyle giving us a total now of four yellow cards. Antrim are beginning to stick into their opponents. Referee seemed to blow his whistle, now he's decided against it. Toll coming through, well intercepted. And the ball has gone out over the end line and a 45 for Derry. Ryan Lynch feeding Johnny McBride. And just the Antrim player unfortunate to slip out over the end line. Derry are introducing Cahill Diamond and Ryan Lynch is the player that's gone off. So the substitute has been taken off as such and a new substitute brought on. Anthony Toho, score of four points from place balls. Going for his fifth. Roughing it in. Breaks free. And the referee has given the free to Antrim. And the noise and the din around Casement Park, it's almost impossible to hear uh, the referee's whistle. Gerard Adams surviving the challenge from short Mar Marty Lockhart. Long ball from Aidan Morris. Back there is Anthony Tohill. Playing a more defensive role to Cahill Diamond. Niall McCosker 
Great movement by Derry, sweeping up the field, resulting in this free. Gary Coleman sending it in towards the goalkeeper, Sean McCreevy. Sheeny McQuillan. Majol. Championship encounter in the first half. We now have a riveting match which could conceivably go either way. Derry still the masters on the scoreboard. Henry Downey. It's a poor pass. And Antrim survive yet again. And thanks to Aidan Morris, wins a free. Tenacious defending by the centre half back. John Kelly. Long ball down towards Kevin Madden. Roland Hamill almost at the end of it. Michael Conlon gives it out towards his captain. And again, Anthony Dole is playing deep now. As Derry's opponents play with new vigour. Roland Rocks, well beaten by Aidan Marks. Player available is Joe Quinn. Fully recovered to his captain, Anto Finnegan. Again, they try and feed corner forward Kevin Brady. Playing almost a solo flight up front at the moment. Kieran McKeever. Most enjoyable championship football at the moment. Muldoon back to McKeever. To Dermot Dugan in space. Hits it with the side of his foot and over the bar. For his third point of the game. And Derry are a very worried side despite that point as they now bring in Joseph Cassidy to their attack. This was a good score and for the first time in a long sequence Antrim defending was lax to say the least. Damien Cassidy telling Joe Brawley he's going to be the next to enter the fray. Also warming up is Seamus Downey. This is his brother Henry with possession. Up towards Ender Muldoon, the National Football League champions. Character now just being tested by a great spirited second half from Anton. Good point by Dugan. And the centre half forward registers his fourth point of the match. Not renowned as a prolific scorer, but today he is certainly producing the goods. In the Muldoon is now operating at uh, midfield, and Dermot Heaney's gone in full forward. It's hard to believe that we're watching the same Antrim, Antrim team as we had in the first half. They have a lot more belief, a lot more aggression, and they're a lot more direct in the second half. And Derry, their character has been tested, and they lifted in the last five minutes. I, I just hope Antrim can stay with him now, because this is a crucial period for them. Free for Antrim for that uh, foul by the Derry player in possession. Kevin Madden's jersey was being pulled, so it's a free for Antrim. Four points, remember, between the teams. As Sheeny McQuillan once again stands over this in an effort to raise another white flag for his county. Dropping in, off the pass. Gary Coleman, Dermot Dugan, as the Derry teamwork once again is shown here by players trying to work deep for each other. Joseph Cassidy. Back to Henry Downey. Anthony Toho is available. This time it's well read by Kieran Killalek. 
Jill Quinn. Fair shoulder from Ender Muldoon. Paul McFlynn has it now. Joseph Cassidy. The rave running off the ball by Gary Coleman. It loses possession. And Coleman concedes the free. Still plenty of time for Antrim. Henry Downey. Kieran McKeever. Seemed to throw the ball in John Bannon's eyes. Kieran maintains there was momentum. There was striking action from the right hand to the left. But uh, it is a free for Antrim. And this is a crucial kick because it could possibly reduce Derry's safe lead of four points down to three. Quillen taps it over the bar for his second of the match. Antrim are introducing Paddy Logan and Derry are introducing Seamus Downey as we look at that free from Sheenie McQuillan. Changes in both defensive lineups. Dermot Heaney goes off for Derry. And it's the Oak Leaf County that once again goes into the attack. Paddy Bradley cutting it inside towards Johnny McBride. Danger here for Antrim. Goalkeeper is off his line and it goes off him for a 45. chance here for Derry and the goalkeeper had to uh, in his opinion come off his line perhaps he didn't when you see the replay tailing a little bit comes back off the uh, goalpost I think and Antrim come away with it here on Killale Todd Coleman poor pass well intercepted by Gary Coleman and Derry counter attack Anthony Toll to the unmarked Joseph Cassidy That's no threat to Antrim. Once again, danger for Antrim when uh, Anthony Tohill adopts a more offensive role. And Joe Quinn once again needs some medical attention. That knee is still a source of worry and great concern to him personally and indeed to Antwerp. Derry have maintained control despite this great fight back by Antwerp. Do you think Antwerp could do it, Tony Davis? Well, at this stage, up to now, they've done quite well in the second half. But as you can see, the experience of Henry Downey, Anthony Toll, and those lads, they're holding the ball up and they're letting the ball off. P 
people have, that have played as long as these guys have played know at times during a game you're going to be under pressure and they're going to come at you. It's just hold your cool and in the end of the day, the better team should come out on top. But in fairness to Antrim, they came out in the second half and played with great pride. And it's not over yet, they're still there. Kevin Doyle. Crossfield ball, nicely tapped back by Joe Cassidy. Dermot Dugan. And Antrim have it, eventually. Aidan Morris, Martin Mulholland, Joe Quinn, and Kevin Brady. Coming through the centre. Paddy Logan, and that's well wide. Again, it's quite noticeable, Tony, that the full forward strategy seems to be uh, to move away out around midfield, giving them little or no option in terms of the use of a long ball. Yes, and at the start of the second half, they used it quite effectively. When they were winning the breaks in midfield, they let the win do the work and win the breaks in round the goal and got their scores. They need scores badly now, with a half an hour played in the second half. Joe Cassidy. That's well won by Kieran Killeleg to his captain Anto Finnegan. Kevin Doyle. Paddy Logan. Spreading it out to this side. Where Peter McCann is available. With him is Kieran McKeever. Good running by McCann. And after all of that hard work, kick the ball in a straight line. And nowhere near the Derry goalposts. This had possibilities until the kick finally arrived. And that was disappointing. One thing that's very noticeable, and you couldn't see it on the monitor, was there was seven Derry players between him and the goal. So really he had no option but to go himself. There was nobody actually showing for the ball to take it off him. Joseph Brawley is uh, anxious to enter this championship arena. It's Antrim that are surging forward. Here's a chance. Kevin Brady, second goal. They're back in business yet again. And once more, it's the long ball strategy. And all Antrim have to keep doing is pump it in long and hard. And they just could well beat the National League champions. The sides are level. They've got two chances of goals, Antrim, and they've scored on both occasions. Brady is a hero in Belfast. Here comes the long kick from Paddy Logan. Kevin Brady was on the end of it to finish it. Derry's ticket to the Ulster final may well have to be cancelled. Three minutes left in Belfast. Could this be yet another shock on a championship that has produced so many? Brady the hero. Brady the villain on this occasion. It's heartwarming. It's invigorating. It's almost bordering on spiritual what Antrim have produced in this second half. They look dead and gone. Beaten by a superior side technically and indeed strategically and here they are level with the league champions this is Antrim this is Joe Brawley to try and retrieve a situation that seemed almost unimaginable Anthony Toll Seamus Downey Dermot Dugan Antrim cannot afford to foul Joe Brawley now Brawley Recovering from injury, sends it right across the face of the goal. And that is now the turn of John Kelly to get away from Niall McCosker. The freest Antrim. What an amazing second half. What a terrific comeback. Great spirit and pride. And as well as that, Good scores as well. When they left the ball into the full, full, full back line, 
their equal back then is quite small and it caused them all sorts of trouble and boy did they take their scores well and well deserved Brian White on tender hooks is the voyage to continue or will it end in the next minute and a half Dermot Dugan still Dugan pumping it into the corner where Joe Brawley is over at the far side and fouled and a chance for Derry to score from here and book the place in the Ulster final the foul by Kieran Killale was unnecessary and it's Joe Brawley that has possession takes it quickly to Dermot Dugan takes the shot and that is dropping in to Sean McQueevy anywhere will do now 20 seconds or so left in actual playing time the referee blows the whistle so from where the ball landed despite Anthony Toll kicking it back it's a free for Antrim and for descent there's an extra 10 meters Sheeny McQuillan now has the chance Been successful on three occasions out of six. This is nerve tingling. People standing on their feet in Belfast. McQuillan hits it well. It's dropping in. And it's off the post, off the fingertips of Anthony Toll. Gary Coleman. Carl Diamond and Paul McFlynn combining. Coming down on the blind side is Carl Diamond. We're now into injury time. Surely a draw is a fair result for both counties. Dermot Dugan, back to Carl Diamond. He'll try from here. There's nobody there. The referee looks at his watch. It's down towards Paddy Logan. Another long ball from Logan. The last time it resulted in Kevin Brady's second goal into the space the referee blows his whistle and it's all level in Belfast the National Football League champions Derry the hottest of favourites not alone for the Ulster Championship or perhaps for the All-Ireland have been held by Little Antrim an amazing amazing second half and perhaps just moments away from a historic victory for Antrim but to be fair to both teams they certainly deserved another day out, and that is exactly what will happen. The big story from Belfast, the league champions have been held to a draw. Full-time score from Casement Park. Antrim, two goals and eight points. Derry, 14 points. The first half to forget, a second half to inspire. We'll have more of the same after the break. It'll be Cork against Kerry. inflate the dinghy here in the studio. I can't understand how the two of you went so badly against Antrim and that. <laughs> well, uh, you can join the crowded ship at this stage, Michael, but uh, in fairness, uh, you know, what, Antrim put a lot of heart and spirit into the second half. They made a couple of clever moves. They brought on Kevin Madden and Kieran Killilay, who tightened up things considerably. Kevin Brady will be the hero now with two goals. It showed up a lot of weaknesses, though, in the Derry defence. And when the Derry forwards came under pressure, none of them could be, were able to kick a point. And you had wholesale substitutions. Now, I still think Derry... I, did, I didn't get it wrong yet. I think Derry will win by 10 points, but I didn't say it was going to be today. It might be the next day. Uh, we'll <laughs> That's have the to best I can do. That's the best you can do with the circumstances.